Hello, fellow humans. Today I'm finishing up my basement and I've always wanted one of those secret hidden bookcases. That's gonna have like one of those secret hidden book flippy door opening things to, you know, open up and go into the really cool room. I have no idea what I'm doing. We'll see what happens. If it works out, then all you're gonna need to come into the shop is this right here. Wish me luck. So we're starting this build with no real plan. I have an idea in my head. I know I want a bookcase. I know I need a pencil. And the only other thing I know is that I'm gonna be using these hidden hinges. I'll put a link in the description for these. They're pretty cool. They rotate out to 180 degrees, so it's the perfect hinge to use for this operation. And I will mention that they are the most pivotal part of this entire build. Without these hinges, this isn't gonna work. So take your time, plan it out, and pretty much do a better job than me. this before but the neat thing with these hinges is they're kind of magic and once you get them fit into place if you clap them together a few times they screw themselves now it's time to pop these guys on the wall and give them a little tap 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 you know make it level is it level is it level is it good oh good I was beginning to worry that I need to start again I don't want to start again. That would just, that would be horrible needing to start again and again. But that's obviously not the case because these are securely fastened to the wall and they're not going anywhere. Now it's time to cut down our bookshelf side and get it test fit into place. Oh, he's so happy. Look! He's so happy and he has no idea what's about to happen. Oh, it's so good. So since we didn't have a plan with this build, we're gonna use this super technical method of figuring out how wide the bookcase is gonna be. I also used my super technical technique here to figure out where to put my bottom shelf so I could use these one inch caster wheels. Luckily, it actually lined up with the second hole from the bottom. That just goes to show sometimes not having a plan actually works out. Unfortunately with me, most of the time, it doesn't. Like this cut. But I'm just skipping ahead. So let's cut down some shelves and assemble our bookcase. Do we see a problem? I've been waiting for this. Do we see... A problem. Ah, I cut from the wrong side. Yeah, you did, you dolt. So the holes don't line up. No, they don't, not even a little bit. Now I have to fix it. Yeah, you do. I ended up figuring out to use these shelf pins to properly line up my bookcase sides. Now this is a brilliant idea that I wish past you had had so that current Hugh wouldn't need to do all this extra work and future Hugh, which is now current Hugh, wouldn't need to talk about it. Sometimes that's how we learn. So you're gonna learn way more from the mistakes you made than from the successes you had on your first attempt. So don't be too hard on yourself. Just take it apart, fix it, put it back together 
and carry on. With our build back on track, it was time to add a couple of cross braces for support. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. These are just going to add some support to help keep the bookcase from racking back and forth, especially since I don't have a back on it yet. But right now, it's not time to put a back on. It's time to put it on the wall and see if it works. Look at it go. Oh, it's so exciting. Look at it, just opening and closing like a hidden bookcase should. And with that look of complete shock, it was time to stare at what I have accomplished and then make it level. So it turned out to be about a half an inch out. So I need to pull the entire thing off the wall again, remove the caster. I installed a piece of half inch plywood and I decided to add another wheel for good measure and pop it back into place. Don't ask. I don't even really know what's happening here. So at this point I realized the poplar wasn't going to cut it and I wanted to add another hinge into the middle. So I decided on some 5 8 door jam because I had it laying around. I installed three hinges, put it on the wall, installed the bookcase, leveled it out, and I thought I was good. Thought I had this all sorted out. But as you might have guessed by now, that's not how this build is gonna go. So take a close look at what not to do, and maybe let me know in the comments if you have a better idea than 5 8 door jam. I'd like to know what your thoughts are. So now that I knew where everything was gonna sit, I just had to pull it all apart and put in a front skirting. I had about a quarter inch taper, and this was because my floor is not completely level. So to cut in the taper, I actually sanded it out. Don't ask me why, this is just what I did. So with the bookcase back on the wall and sufficiently tested, the next thing I decided to do was put a trim piece on the top, but don't worry about this, I'm gonna take it off later. I just felt like showing it to you. You're welcome. Now it's time to get into the good stuff, to figure out how we're going to latch this bookcase closed. So I found these rollerball pantry door latches, and I thought this would be a cool idea. That way you can just push the bookcase closed and it would latch into place, and then you can just pull it open. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. With some offset blocks drawing to take care of that gap for the latch, it was time to take care of the gap itself. It turned out that two and a half inch trim was actually the perfect size to cover that gap. The only problem was figuring out how to actually attach it to the bookcase. So I decided to rip down some plywood. Oh. Oh. Ugh. Ew. Now time to wipe some fruit fly guts on my pants and keep building. Just like you didn't murder a bug. Now with an appropriate number of clamps holding my trim piece together, I'll let that glue dry, and I can mount my latch. So the nice thing about this latch is you can screw out the little ball bearing end, so you do have some adjustability, which is kind of neat. Oh, 
<laughs> oh, that's a happy human right there. Oh, what is going on? Are you okay? You don't know. That's okay, neither do I. The only thing I know is it's time to put it back on. Now in case the finger wave wasn't enough, I am gonna say, don't do this. This is a horrible idea. This is not a smart way to use a table saw to cut down anything. But if you do it and you get away with it, at least celebrate. Don't do that. Don't do that. So a smarter way to do this is to lay it on the floor, put down something sacrificial, and use a circular saw or a track saw if you happen to be lucky enough to have one. And just like that, you'll be so happy that you still have all your fingers that you just feel like dancing. So happy. Now we're gonna use a flush cut router bit to trim this to size. I did overcut this on three sides with this intention in mind. So that looks pretty good. Do you guys wanna see a mistake? Do you want to see a poor life choice? Did you see it? Did ya? Oh, crap. That was a bad idea. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that at all. Oh, you dolt. Now we need to fix it. Yeah, you do. Now we need to fix it. Aw, nothing. So in all honesty, that mistake kind of broke me. I decided that I should just move on to a more important issue and I'll let this guy tell you about it. So I need to give some more support to this. Um, this 5 8 door jam just isn't enough. Uh, so it's also kind of why I didn't finish the drywall that I had in here. So I'm gonna get some boards. I'm gonna make something go in here. I don't know what it's going to look like. Just like the rest of this, we'll figure it out as we go! So I'm not going to tell you how long I actually sat there and stared at this wall, but this is, this is a little indication of how I spent a lot of my day. One, two by six. To the home center! Back in the home store. Got a two by six. One by six? Two. 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 Two by six. We're gonna put it in here. See how it goes. Anyone have a hamster or a bunny perhaps that needs some bedding? No? All right, just thought I'd ask. Size is good, our height is good, our width, our thickness, our depth, all those things. Do you really know what you're doing? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. We're figuring this out as we go. So we're gonna cut out some more drywall and super trick of the day, you can use a magnet to find a screw in your drywall. Cut it out. Don't judge me, I grew up in the 90s. And if you don't know the reference, then shame on you. So with our new board hammer fisted into place, we could use some proper size screws. Yeah, big difference. And really get this bookcase secured. Or so we thought. Oh, now this again. So the problem that I'm having here is this door jam is just not working out. I tried shimming it. I tried talking nice to it. I tried yelling at it. None of those things worked, and I just, I don't know why. So I decided to kick it, and when that didn't work, I just, I had a little cry. Sometimes 
You just have to sleep on it and you come up with a better plan the next day, which is exactly what I did. I took the bookcase off the wall, pulled the door jam, and I decided to use a two x four. I already had a two x six on the other side, so a two x four on the bookcase side just seemed like a logical choice. Now I need to do it one, two, three, seven more times. I'll save you the pain. So after a few hours of cutting out hinges, this is what we have. Ah! Oh. It's it's fine. It's fine. Don't don't worry about it. Let's let's just get this installed. recommend an assistant if you happen to have one. This is just really awkward and an extra set of hands goes a long way. Well, now that the secret's out that I am in fact a ninja, we can reveal our other secret, our secret bookcase. for sticking around and checking out part one. Uh, part two, we're going to make a door under the stairs and then we're going to make a secret book to open it. So I'm going to show you all the engineering that I had to figure out to make that work. We're going to do some leather work. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. And then we're going to come back and we're going to fix this bookcase. So I didn't really like the little pantry door latch that we had in there. So I decided it would be much better if we had a little robot light that turns on and opens our bookcase up. So check out those videos. They'll be like somewhere here-ish, somewhere when they're ready. But until then, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate the time that you have invested in watching me make a thing. So on that, have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you next time.